<laughs> it worked, it worked. Oh my God. Typical Jonathan fishery mirror, line of scales, and on my rod. <laughs> right, welcome to my good friend Nils, Jonathan fishery. This is some place, mate. What a it? place! What a place! This mate. is for us. It's like heaven, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful, three, three. Yeah, I don't know, probably. maybe three, maybe four acres of, of lake that Nils and his family have dug and stocked and nurtured for years now. Yeah, it's, it's been handcrafted, isn't it, with passion and with just a mind and goal to have a premium carp fishery down in the southwest. And well, fish, you've got, he's got it. I mean, look at the stock. Like just talking to Neil earlier on the way in, 70 fish, yeah. 10 little stocky things. Yeah, it's all the 60 grown fish, on, and he reckons getting close to 50 of them or over 30 pounds. Uh, just this year alone on social, I've seen three fish over 40 pounds. That's been the last six or seven weeks, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, it's been really So they're going, time. and there's a lot, and again, I watched the social because I knew we were coming here. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of 36 to 38s, isn't yeah. there? There's a, and like say, mega place, fish though. of that stand that haven't been out in quite a while yet as well. No, you know? and it, oh. I was and gonna, look, yeah, I haven't even, don't even look. looked at that. Yeah, don't I'm down look. that way. Well, I stayed um, in the house uh, uh, last time I came here with Debbie, three dogs, uh, and my son Lee, as you know, and that is ridiculous in yeah, there, isn't it? You know, gorgeous. you get that, you book, this is a, you book, this is a whole, isn't you? It's not split bookings, is it? No, it's a whole lake exclusive on the site, um, and there's three different sets of accommodation. And, and I mean, throughout the, this film, obviously, we'll run everyone through that and how yeah. to book and stuff yeah, like that. Visit all, all them, show all them yeah, little it's... lodges. But let's get the rods in the water, Dan. Uh, we'll have a bit more of a, a lengthy and personal chat this evening. Yep. Till then, rigs, plop them over there. Let's try and catch one of these 30s. <laughs> I hope so. Do for me. Let's do it. Come on. Now, it's that time of year. I fished it before. When I fished it before, it was all sweet corn. It was really warm. The water was warm. The weather was blinding. But we are now, we've had two frost. So what I've brought with me, I've got one rod already out with a 12 mil chocolate milk pop-up on it, but the other two are going to have to be little red maggot balls just to see. It gives, you know, it's an edge. It is a cold, I mean, the water isn't cold yet, but for me, it's it. This is the time it's starting for your maggot, maybe your worm. Uh, so I've got two rods, long story short, are going on little balls of maggots on the far margin with a pint of maggots thrown around the pair of them. And um, bear in mind, a pint is not a lot when you consider the stock in this lake, in this small little lake, with all the big fish in it. So, But that's, at least we can add more to it. Clearly, you can't take them out. So what we've got here is one of my little size four beak points, 20 maggots and a little bit of buoyant foam. Uh, and that's going off the far side. The other one, the one with the chocolate will pop up, we've put a couple of handfuls of uh, sweet corn around it. We'll see what produces. Without further ado, we'll get this. It's all balanced now, nice, or should be. Ooh, that is a bite. And we'll get that flicked over the other side where I threw that pint of maggots. So I'm actually in the middle of the lake for this session and I've got an island out in front, as you can see, with the bridge over. And again, it seems like this is where they're going to move through, you know, it's deeper up in front of Ian and then there's a bottom lodge right down there that Neil's going to be doing the nights, I believe. So for me, it's all about minimum disturbance. I spoke to Ian who fished here last year and he told me he'd done a fish off of that bush over there. I think it's maybe an alder tree. So I'm going to have one over there. And then the next one's going to be off the island. Seems very visual and it, it sort of instant place to start. Wouldn't see why not. And then round to my left, again, it's sort of a bit of a quieter bay and there's a real big overhanging tree. So I'm going to get in there, tuck one up and see what happens. Have you fed that dog? Is it it's staring at me? Look. I have fed him, but if you ain't careful. <laughs> <laughs> he's, um, he, he's partial for 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 um, extremely good looking. He's dressed like a stick, and he loves sticks. This yeah, is what yeah. happens, you see. Um, well, I know you don't mess about, mate. So I know you have got three rods out already. Yeah. 
I've, I've gone for the old washing line rig, you know. Yeah, good it, for you, mate. It's in favour, but for these situations, I just think it, it might serve me well um, and hopefully keep them travelling up there. That's a tactic I've never had to employ in my angling. Really? Well, I've never been anywhere I think it's, it's going to help me, but See, I'm that sure. That guy there, Mr Lister, he swears by it and he kind of got into my head on a few places, especially small places, pressured places, yeah, yeah. and he thinks it can nick you, but, and I do get oh, it. Oh, I've no doubt what it is a lot it of faff. If it works for you, it works for you, doesn't it? And if mine works, it works. More importantly, we're both fishing. Yeah. See you later. Sitting next to Ian, having a little chin wag, and Leaps on my rod that's fishing washing line, run up here, it's pulled out the clip. So we'll still a minute, watch the line, nothing happened. Wound down, wound down, wound down, and nothing was on the end. And it was right in front of me, so I'm pretty sure I haven't been done, nothing was kiting. Now I'm just been chatting to Alex, debating whether it was a perch, there's perch in here, whether the clip over there at the moment is just a clothes peg, whether it's just pinged out of that. So I don't really know. The maggots look fine. The ledge was still on tack, so I'm going to get it back out just before dark and uh, maybe I'm going to catch a good one. But we have got a lovely takeaway courtesy of Neil and Tasha this evening. So while we're in the lodge enjoying that, I'm certainly going to pick their brains about this place, find out a bit more information. Mr. Russell? Yes, sir. It was a quiet night for me. What about you? It wasn't for me. No? <laughs> for the wrong reasons. I got a bit of a chill. I was sweating and cold and it was a horrible night, mate. So um, I was glad to see daylight. But it's, uh, you know, we're on the, this weather's bizarre, mate. I mean, this year's been bizarre, hasn't it? Literally last week, I was <clears> filming <throat> with Hass and Alex here. And he was in shorts well, and t-shirt, mate. But look at us now, mate. This yeah. is just ridiculous. So where, I mean, I know there's a lot of big fish in here. It's a very small yeah. venue. I still feel we should have caught fish and we'll keep trying. But um, it's being a bit painful, isn't it, mate? Yeah, I think it's, we've got to keep our eyes peeled and react to whatever we see, haven't we, you know? We, we hadn't got here this, this oh, I thought that was years away. Like you say, within 24 hours, I thought we were going to see at least one fish out on the bank. Um, but Neil said it has been fishing start to now as well. It, yeah. it could be a matter of it, it all of a sudden switches on. I don't know. Um, well, we're here. We're here till tomorrow lunchtime, aren't we? Yeah. So um, <clears throat> we've got another... We've literally been here 23 hours now. So we've got another 25 hours to go. So I'm coming up to 24 hours I've been here and I haven't seen a lot in my water whatsoever. We've seen the odd show in front of Ian, not much, but I was just literally walking out of the lodge and Bush won the show just my side of the rope. So unlike Ian, I haven't got his vast amount of experience. I'm not a formidable carp catcher like him, so I need to put everything in my favour to make sure that one show I'm going to fish to it as effectively as I can. So I've cast over, I'm trying to keep minimum disturbance. So I'm going to be fishing the washing line again, just to try and eradicate any, any pr the presence of me being in there with lines cutting through the water. It's probably more of a mind game for myself, but Ian's quite comfortable. If he sees a fish, he'll ping a rod, bump, 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 down, he's fishing. Whereas me, I want to know I fished with that with minimal disturbance. I'm presented, I've got a little bit of bait round it, not just a single. So that's why I've opted for this. It's a bit more faff. He got his rod out half hour ago. Now he's round there with his feet up having a cup of tea. <laughs> so, you know, it, it, but he, he has got valuable experience and confidence, and that is something I can't buy. So I just need to make sure I'm putting all the little percentages in my favour. And that's exactly why I'm doing this. Welcome back from doing that washing line. And it's the first positive sign of fish I've seen off this island. And it is the backside of the island compared to me, but a real good tail pattern. And we were just going to go over the bridge and have a little look, but I'm glad we made the decision not to. 
and I'm fishing just the other side, so I know they are at least getting around that island or visiting that island for whatever reason. So I think now it's all about sitting on my hands, really. It's exciting when you know there's some chunks in it, though, it really is. All fishing's great, but when there's a chance of a big one, and there's a chance of a PB in here for me, <laughs> oh, come on. If it goes up to the platform, I'll follow it because there's scaffold poles up there. Cool, look at him kicking the bottom. <laughs> it worked, it worked. Oh my God. It has to be said, Ian, I've never known you so quiet, my friends. <laughs> Most sincere. Mate, listen, <coughs> you, we have sat in there. Boys, in mate. all fairness, listen, that you and I are, are, are two of the most confident, I wouldn't say confident, <laughs> confident <laughs> anglers when we're doing these things. This is, I thought, I really thought this was going to start booting us in the, yeah. in the privates, mate. So um, it's very cold, this wind is bitter. I've had to take my coat off because we're going to photograph a blooming fish. Um, and there you go. That was, the roads have been doing that, haven't they? Yeah. This went... And I looked out and it was jammed. Can only be yeah. one of them, can't it? Yeah, I was worried about it. I mean, I just thought... Every train I thought was Green Triangle. <laughs> shut up, Alex. Shut up, Dan. Yeah, but, yeah, and it is, it's paid off, mate. It's all about the pressure's off now, isn't it, you know? So chuffed to bits, mate. But typical Johnson fishery mirror line of scales and on my rod. <laughs> yeah! Well, come on in, I want to see that. it. Let's on. get her out, get her photographs and get her back. Right, just under 24 hours at Johnson, first bite. This is one of the babies of the lake. This is 22 and a half pounds, but they all fight, they all fight like a fish twice their size. Or was it me being nervous? I think I know the answer to that. I think you know the answer to it as well. Nevertheless, we're off the mark. We've got a fish. It lifts the spirits. A couple of pictures. And let's go looking for your dad. Get your nose up. Here we go. <laughs> One down, 69 to go. Just quickly skip round the other side while Dan's watching the rods. This is where I had the 22 from. Now, what I've done here, what I've done earlier was I was coming right up to the margin. Um, then I came around again, bounced the lead until it went down the, down the shelf, if you like, because it, it does shelf off. And that's where I caught the fish from. I dropped it. Instead of doing nine and a half wraps, I went at about eight and three quarters, which was a bit deeper on the lead. So I've now got a rod here, a rod here, and one in the corner, so I've pulled it off. I did have one on the stick up here, which is fairly obviously where everyone baits because it's a stick that glows up in the dark, um, which means you can't ignore that because, to be fair, they're fed there all the time. But, um, but I've, having had a bite in this gap in the reeds, it's silly to not concentrate two rods on it. Right, that'll do. That'll do for now because we're sort of running out. Back round there now. Now that was about six foot in front of these reeds. Where we saw, well, this observation, we saw one show there. So we, come on, a bit puffed now. We shot round here, lowered it in. And how long has that been there, Alex? Half hour? Again, half hour, mate. And 
I really do, um, I really do hang on. Now this is on the bank where an easterly is blowing right into the bank. And it's like I just said, this fish was about six foot off the bank. And Dan, we weren't even fishing this time yesterday, were we? We wasn't set up this time yesterday. You know what I say about buses? I'd literally put the 22 and a half back and this rod that I'd walk around and lowered in the edge, which I will talk to you a bit more in depth once we put him back, uh, rattled off. I thought this one would be the one that went to be fair. 27 pounds of really, they are so deceiving these fish. They're so chubby and dense because they're pellet fed, aren't they? But not today. This one again was on a bunch of red maggots. So now I'm going to feed it again and put one of my little sweet spice down there, which incidentally, is red and the next one your big daddy will be on one of my lovely little dynamite pop-ups until then let's get you back get round there tie a new rig lower it in put that kettle on that's it right now only another 68 to go <laughs> come on down Right, that, 27 pound, can't moan there. Now I'll tell you what we've done with this. About an hour, maybe an hour ago, we were sitting outside the little, little, outside the, the villa, and um, over Dan's shoulder, I saw one show tight against the other end of this reed bed. Um, so rather than put it there, you know, I spoke to Neil, we're okay, we're only there. Rather than put it down, cast it all the way across, I whizzed around here with these in the ground, lowered her in, couple of scoops of red things on top of it within the hour off it goes 27 pounder so this time I've actually put one of my little sweet spice pop-ups on a 12 miller they are out of the range the ones I've used the most and the ones I've done best on but whether or not it's going to make any difference they're red maggots I've got a red pop-up that's just me so we'll wait and see I'm very confident and hopeful this is the one I thought would go anyway that one over there was like, yeah. But they're all back in play, all three of them now. I think we should, I know everyone says this, but I think we should go and get a cup of tea. An hour ago, I was feeling like death warmed up. Now it's got a little spring in my step, like a little Thompson's gazelle. And by the way, who needs a washing line? Not me. Check out the crib. Right. Come here. Right. And you know what, with that, it's that time of year now. I'm seeing all over Instagram the big feed ups on. Well, it it hasn't been on on some of the venues I've been on, and it clearly isn't on here. What we've got here, I believe, is a very, we weren't fishing this time yesterday. We missed this. What I'm now going to refer to as a window, uh, a feeding window, and we've all had them, and we've all missed them, and we've all taken advantage of them. It's that time of year for me. Unless they are having a massive munch, you're going to get an hour, maybe two hours in, in a 24-hour clock where you can get it. Now, if you think that first fish, which was a 22, as soon as I got him on, up on the mat, popped the rig out, put him in the water in the net to keep him, <coughs> secured him with my little pair of scissors in the net, fresh rig on, put it back out. Now, that rod hasn't gone, but it could have done, couldn't it? You know, you've got to make the most of them little tiny windows. Spare rigs already, you only need one or two this time of year, you're not gonna batter it. Well, it'd be nice if you did, but it, it, unfortunately, I don't think you're gonna batter it. But, but nicking an extra bite in that hour or so is, um, 
It'd be very important. And it could make or break your trip. You know, there's a lot of 30s in there. There's a 22. In the last hour and a half, I've had a 22 and a 27. Although they're, they're, um, mate, they're, they are fantastic fish. When you think probably 60% of the lake are 30 pounders. And my last trip last year with my son Lee, we had, I think, a dozen and half of them were 30s. So if we get another bite, big 30s are us. No, I don't really want to bully either because I've been waiting for so long for a fish. They're coming, Neil, they are. The weather's turned. The first Johnson carp made up with this one. 22 pound, eight ounce, beautiful linear. Again, one of the smaller ones in there. I think it's just a matter of time. This weather's supposed to be changing for tomorrow as well. I'm heading off tomorrow, but fingers crossed there's going to be a chance for a bigger one. They go a lot bigger in there than this, but I'm absolutely made up. This was washing lined over to the far side. I'm going to get him back, get that resorted, and yeah, come on, get on. We're happy. So, I'd done this rod probably two hours before I got the tape, and I changed the rig. I'd gone from a high sitting sort of Ronnie rig, and now I've gone to sort of, you know, beat point, and my foam just sits up on the bottom, just a lot tighter. So I thought if they're grubbing around for bits and bobs, something blatant sitting up in their face, I'm just as likely to hook them in the bloody eyeball than I'm to actually hook them in the mouth. So I dropped that, but also I put bait in there, done a bag, and probably done about four ramples over the top. I was almost getting in readiness for the night. Um, but, but like I say, two hours, the fish were clearly moved in and wanted something to eat and it seemed to pay dividends. So I'm going to do exactly the same again. And I've just come around onto the island, accessible by a footbridge. So I saw some fizzing over here yesterday and I've sort of got a rod on it, nothing's happened. But I just thought before I get settled for the evening again, come see if I can identify anything a bit different. But as with Johnson, it's all fairly clean, fairly presentable. I don't know if there's just a bit of bait there, it's just something of interest. And it just gets shallower and shallower the closer you come. Right, Daniel, son, today, you know, this morning was a little bit doom and gloom, wasn't it? Because it was so cold and we ended up seeing anything. Uh, and then, bosh, one showed over there, spun that rod round there and things sort of changed. Within yeah. two hours, we had, uh, we had three bites between us, mate. It was mad, isn't it? This is it. The, the weather's been quite changeable. We're, we're feeling confident of another bite as well now, aren't we? You know, it's... Very much so. The city wouldn't surprise me this evening if we get one. Yeah. The roads have been less active. Yeah. The bobbins haven't been dancing. The only times they've danced today is when it's been a carp on the end. No, which yeah. is brilliant. And I'm, again, three different spots as well. Uh, but they are all on the far margin. Yeah, exactly that. But do, do you think they're used to being everyone targeting the far margin? That's all their regular patrol? Yeah, they get fed there, don't they? They get fed there, mate. If everyone fed this edge, they'd get fed there. Yeah. You know, they're, 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 I'm sure they come along here, but they get fed by everyone who comes here, does what we do, mate. And which is what we talked about when we got here. You might just as well do that because they're so used to it, mate. If, like you say, if we'd have seen them in the middle, we'd have fished from in the middle. I fished in the middle, mate. Well, I mean, yeah. I'm trying to bleed and zig today, but, um, you know, we have worked hard today. 
and, it, and it's paid off with three fish. Yeah. So I think we've been unlucky on the size to have yeah. had three twenties. Not a complaint because we've had three fish. But going on the amount of thirty pounders plus is mid thirties in here. We've got it all to play for, mate. That's exactly sure. it. If we've had a few twenties and there's a few more bites to be had still. I'm seeing it's the average going to creep up, yeah. personally. Well, we've got um, till tomorrow lunch, haven't we? Let's yeah. see what, you know, see what the night brings. My first bite was about midday, so we're going to have to hang on to just after lunch on tomorrow and, and, and see what, you know, see what comes like, you know. And you've had your little dunk I in know. the sauna thing, you didn't you, in the, in the hot tub? The facilities are something else, you know. I do love a lake exclusive, so I like having a social. I like, yeah. I like being a walk around and create opportunities if you can. But the facilities are just second to none here, aren't they? You know? It's beautiful. Really. If you want to bring your missus, you want to bring your kids, your family, or you just want it on your own, you know, it's all there. It's, yeah. And it's dog friendly. It you know, when I came last year, we had three dogs with us. Uh, it's all fenced in. You can just let them off. As long as you do the walk in the evening and check on there, that they ain't done anything. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it, it's, it's beautiful, mate. I can't think of any negatives about Johnson, mm. other than when Neil popped in. <laughs> over there, that chap over there, like, you know, he, no, he seriously, me a beer and it is amazing, it? Yeah. It, it's a beautiful, beautiful place, and um, let's hope we get to meet, <laughs> it's pretty much on the hill, <laughs> get to meet one of them big ones. Yeah, well, I think we're going to die of um, pneumonia by the morning anyway, so, right, if we haven't received him, we'll ping this back on, if we don't, usual thing is, see you in the morning. In the morning. Chuffed to bits with this. We're off at midday tomorrow. So we've got about 12 hours now, 13 hours of fishing. Who knows? The weather's bang on. It's been raining most of the time. We've got a little tiny break in it. And this one tips up. How lovely is that? Let's get him back. <coughs> Lower that rig back in. This, incidentally, this is on my little sweet spice 12 miller that I placed this afternoon that you watched me place. So the first one of this trip on my little pop-up. You little sweet spice nicking monster. Thank you very much. Go on then, darling. Thank you for your time. Don't eat the red pop ups. Look at that. They drop about 18 inches and you lose sight of them. It's that blue water in it. Only 67 left. <laughs> Come on. Good morning, and welcome to my crib. I'm in the double lodge, and it's, for me, it's just what I need. It's not quite the palace that Ian Russell has come accustomed to living in. This is, as it says, double lodge. There's two of them, swim outside each. Pull out double bed, or sofa bed type thing in it. Kettle, TV, and a radiator. What more do you need? But this is always booked as a bolt on for, you have to book the main lodge and then you can book this one and then you can book the far, farthest one, the small lodge. But anyway, this fish is out to the middle of the lake and it's fair to say my night was pretty quiet. Ian had one and we went around there and I've done a few snaps from him and that. 31, so I think it's just under 32. Um, gorgeous fish, a big chunk. And that's what we've come to Johnson for. We, we know it's not a bite water, we've come here to get a bigger one and a 30 pounder is big in anyone's book. So I've got the morning left, probably play it out to about lunchtime, but I've just started seeing the odd, odd show, odd sort of subtle occurrence, if you like, in front of me. And that's a lot more than I've seen the rest of the time, but the weather's changed, we do a bit of rain, it's overcast, it's actually a bit warmer as well. So yeah, it's all about watching the water beautiful these big doors get them open all glass fronts as well so you can you can watch away hmm what do you reckon dog you gonna get one I hope so good morning and obviously you've seen something happened in the night didn't it? <laughs> you caught a fish oh, no. and a big one it was a lovely one mate lovely fish ole, 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 ole. but an hour after that I've gone running around there again because I've got another bite, obviously. Obviously. Blue light, all that going on on the table there. 
It's an hedgehog. <laughs> Amazing. I walked across me bobbin, because yeah. the bobbin's on the floor. And when I got there, he's sitting there about five foot past the bobbin like that. Little yellow eyes looking Very at me. Very sad. Like, they're rare. Why? They're rare, mate. That's rarer than 30. So That is rarer than 30, mate. Take so that. I'll take that. So And that was the end of last night, yeah. to be fair. But, we did say yesterday evening it felt like a fish last yeah. night. It's changed. Yeah. It's changed. This is good weather now. This is but lovely weather. Our trip is coming to an end, mate. Yeah. And again, you, you've been getting progressively worse. You've got the sniffles. I don't know if you've told oh, anyone. Oh, God, mate. I am like... I'm looking forward to a four-hour drive home, I've got to tell you. I'm just counting down the last few hours something happens up there because it was quite quiet last night. But like you say, this feels great. This is this is October Mate, weather. This is we'll what you do want. till lunchtime. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then, woof, get yeah. out of here. Because right. we are going today. And we, hey, Ace. Hey. And we did know this weren't all about bites, this place. We was coming here in the chance of a bigger fish, weren't it? It can be quite... The first 24 hours was challenging, mate. Yeah. And we were thinking, oh, we've got a contingency plan. And then you had a two-hour spell, yes, the afternoon, I wanted to yeah, yeah. it, where there was one, two, three, bosh. Yeah. So, but that, we also noticed how much the weather had changed yeah. just Definitely. prior to that. You know, that easterly wind had dropped. It was a little bit warmer. I was a little bit more snotted up. Uh, no, it had changed, hadn't it? So, I, you know, we saw one jump there, worked on it, bash, got a bite. That's done two takes now, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's amazing. Tucked away in that little bay as well, like, you know, just shows you. Well, it made sense putting the rod there rather than chucking it across the bay, didn't it? Yeah. You know, you're, I'm literally lowering it in, a couple of antlers of bait, putting it down there in the hedgehog country. Yeah. So we're going to do till midday. If yeah. anything happens this morning, we'll get back at you. Other than that, we'll talk to you at midday when we're going to be saying... Tada, we've really enjoyed it. Thank and you I'll very much, Neil. Treat you to a lemsip. That's really lovely. If you've got Come some. Come on, sir. Let's no. go and do some. Yeah, no, you haven't. <laughs>